I like to do that. That'd be interesting to learn. All right, we are live. Hi, everybody. I'm Shauna, and this is Ring of Light Crafts. Um, sorry, we actually been gone for a while uh, due to the fact that my arm has just been hating me here recently. So has my oh, due to allergies. Hi, Faith. Welcome. Um, and so we're back. I may have limited use of my arm, but we're going to give this a try because I wanted to do this. Um, today, what you will need is wood, uh, stencils, or this is canvas sheet, or canvas, or cardboard, anything like that that you can use as a base. Um, hi, Ruth. Hello, Red says hi, and thank you, Faith. I appreciate it. Um, so we're going to try this despite my throat and my arm being messed up. And that's Samson saying he agrees. <laughs> He's all copper tail. Yeah, copper tail, that's what they're called. Anyways, what we're doing is something a little different today. Uh, instead of just painting or making a craft out of nothing, we're going to make a painting out of pretty much nothing. Um, this costs a whole, hang on, I don't know why I'm shutting it, got to open it. This costs a whole dollar and eight cents at the Dollar Tree. Um, and this here is spackling for like fixing the walls and stuff like that. But we're going to try something new. Now, I already pre tried, and I just want to show you guys um, this stuff comes from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to load the camera down for a moment here real fast. I want to show you what this stuff really looks like, okay? And this looks good compared to the way it comes. This is how it, it's coming. Um, it comes like this. Hi, Eileen. Welcome. So it's coming like this, and this is kind of semi-useless like this. So what I had to do is get, oops, is get it all on my computer and everything else. Okay, so what I had to do was I went ahead and put the lid on this one and I added a little bit of water to give it more of a smooth condensity here. Kind of looks like cake frosting. Please do not eat this. If you're working with your little children, don't let them eat this. It's very tempting. It does look like white frosting for on, on a cupcake or something. Let me raise it you back says, up. I have a new page called Creation Cry Cake. Oh, yay! Congratulations, Faith. Uh, put it in the thing if you have it, honey. Hi, Nana. Hi, Nana. Welcome. Um, today, um, Faith, yes, please put it in the thing. Hi, Eileen. Um, because I would love to be able to go and look it up. And that's pretty much the only way I seem to see, see things these days. Is if somebody puts them in a comment, or I'm lucky enough to get a pop-up. Um, especially with an injured arm. Because it's just too hard to sit there and go through stuff. So you put that in there. I love to go look at it. Um, I'm excited for you. Hi, hi, Nana. Welcome. Hey, Nana. We're doing something with spackling, so you might enjoy this. We are actually this is from the Dollar Tree, which I'm sure you know. Uh, for buck eight, can't beat it. Um, but the condensity is like I was showing everybody else. I just off my table. It was like clay, all that sand you put in your hands just kind of melts. So I added a little bit of water to make it a little smoother. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. I'm going to lower you guys. Let me show you. I was messing around with it. And this is what I did without um, adding water to it to try to make it more smoother. Hi, There's, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. There's three different things. Um, the first stage, I just put randomly. Um, smooth some on a canvas to see if we can get a stick. This is canvas paper to see if we can stip, st make it stick. I noticed that it does tend to, uh, some of the stuff will tend to come off because it was at that um, sand like density instead of a smoother density. Now this one compared, and this is also once again the sand like density. So we're going to try it a little different. So I also did this little guy here, just messing around, see what we can make out of them. Um, 
not so pretty, but at least I'm learning how to do this. So. Hi, Patty. Hi, Patty. Welcome. Let me get that out of the way. And Kate says, I'm still working on it to share, and it's still on for me. All right. That's and, awesome. Yeah, and Nana says, I love spackling. You can do so much. Yes, you can, Nana. You're right. Faith, you just keep it up. When you're ready, you feel free to put it in here anytime, okay? I'd be more than happy to go look. Um, this, I know I've done these files so many times, you're probably sick of them, and I don't blame you because I'm pretty sick of them too, but this happens to be the stencils that I have available at this time. Um, this is actually three different types of media. Now, it has all acrylic, it's on wood, of course, has all acrylic black paint for the background, but then I went ahead and I tried stenciling, which is what we're going to do today. We're going to stencil with um, the spackling, and then we're going to do some freehand with it and compare the difference. Sherry says, thank you. I love watching you. Oh, oh thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. Uh, hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Welcome. So I know you can't touch it. Um, my ex-husband was totally blind. Matter of fact, didn't even have one eye. Um, one of the things, he couldn't enjoy painting. And with me, you, well, that's me. I love to paint. So with this spackling, if he was still around, which God protects us, always, all of us, everybody here, feel the difference. It is raised. I don't know if you can see it, but it is raised off of the, the wood, so the canvas. It is raised off of that so that you can feel that there's something here. And if you were visually impaired, you would be able to go, oh, and be able to feel this flower all the way down. Now, I said there are three different types of media, and there is. This one is with the stencil left the width, if you will, the little tiny width they have in here of the stencil. Now, this one is different. This has a rough grade to it. Because what I did, and I don't have a knife here, shame on me. Grandpa, will you get me a butter knife, please? And I'm doing a live. Um, okay, thank you. This here is um, done the same way with the stencil, but then I took the butter knife and I scraped it off. And then anything that got on a black, I just repainted it black. So I can see the different types of, and feel the different textures in it. Will you get me a butter knife, please? Yeah. And the last part, one one. just a butter knife. The last part is just simply done with paint. So that hopefully you guys can see the difference. I'm going to kind of get it up a little close. So hopefully you can see the difference in the rays and the different in the texture. Just so yet you guys can get an idea of what I am trying to explain. That's raised from the wood. And this here is raised just enough, but it has a scrape, thank you, off of a butter knife. Those little edges are in it. And then this here is just simply paint. So we do have the three different medias. Um, well, if you call Hi, it that. Hi, Brooklyn. Welcome, Brooklyn. I have not forgot. I found out what happened to the shipping of my... Um, stuff that I purchased and yours is in it and let me tell you if it's not here by the first I'm just gonna send you something totally different because it's just ridiculous waiting that long and they know it and they apologize but I can't do nothing about it until it gets here so on that note I'm excited to give it to you <laughs> what we're gonna do and I haven't cleaned it and as you can tell so we're gonna try it differently instead of pre-painting my wood we're going to just try it freehand. So I'm going to lower you guys down. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and lower you guys down. Watch your eyes. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Let me go on an angle so hopefully you guys can see this. Oh, I'll make sure you get it, Brooklyn, but thank you for understanding. I will make sure you get it. Absolutely. Okay. I know I got several of these already made, but we're going to do this differently. Because I think it's important to. Oh, I understand that. It sucks. <coughs> Excuse me. So instead of painting the background first, I just wanted to mess around with it. 
So we can, we you could pre-paint this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead. And I'm going to take this back spackle. Oh, I can't say it half time. I pre put in water in this one. Just a little, just enough to make it more of a cream instead of the solid mass that it was. I don't know if it's because it was bad or what, but it came from Dollar Tree. So, and for those, oops, sorry, those who just came on, I'll show you. This is the creamy, nice and creamy. Could be a little more moist, but this is the other. It's like sand. Okay, so let's get started. All I did was I went ahead with my flowers. I did those, as you can tell. We're going to go ahead and see about, can you guys see this okay? Or is it too low? Can you see all right, baby? I'm going to go ahead and get my butter knife because I haven't found my actual knife knife. Oh, no, you can't. Let me raise you up. And let's see. You can see this back. Is it not working well? No, it's delayed a little Oh, there is a delay. Okay. All right, so let me just turn more as an angle. There we go. That's better? Okay. Thank you, guys. So what I did is went ahead and just put that down. I'm going to pick up some of my uh, my paste here, if you will. Since I can't say the name half time, we'll call it paste. There's also a way you can make this homemade, which I'll have to find it, the recipe again and try it myself first. And then I'll post it, but I want to try it first. So all I did was got some of the, okay, I don't want too much at once. I'm just going to place that where I think it should go. And you know what? I'm kind of sick of this butterfly always in a corner. So we're going to angle it, make something different. And all I'm doing is using my hands to help support it. And I'm just going to wipe it on here. If it works, it works. Remember, this is experimental because I did not pre-paint it. This is all experimental. And we're going to try to keep it within that section here. Oh, no, it's coming up. Well, I figured it would. So that's all right. We're just going to do our best with what we got. Sometimes it's a little more challenging. Depends on how wet or dry your spackle, spackle paste is. Oh, good. Thank you, Faith. Sharon. So tell contestants, how are you all doing? Hi, Sharon. Welcome. We're doing well. Thank you. How about you? Name, La Quita. La Quita? So, hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to paint. Basically, it's like putting on, well, it's like clay, you guys. Literally, this is just like a type of clay I'm rubbing on my board here. Now, I probably, my thing did lift, which we all saw, but we're still going to work with it. We're going to see what we can do. This is the first time, like I said, without pre-painting my board. So let's just see what we can make out of it. And then, of course, we do have to set it aside so it can dry. That's why we have the second style or the second item here Hi, we're going to work with. Hi, Robin. Welcome. And Robin says, hello, cooking while asking. And Brooklyn says, that's a great idea. To use that. Thank you. And Sharon says, I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. Oh, my pleasure. I'm glad you're well. So, as you guys can see, I probably should have pre-washed this off. That's definitely my bad. But I'm going to leave those little mess up details in there because I think in the long run it'll look pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is meet the bait. Yep, what we're going to do, pick this up and hope for the best. Okay, and there's a butterfly. Now, any parts that is not how you want it, you guys, because remember it picked up. Why it's wet, you can either use your knife. Usually I have a small little cutter here, but I don't right now because I took my desk out. Then I put it back. I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up real fast here before that starts to dry. And it's supposed to dry within 30 minutes, if I remember correctly, it said. But to be honest, I don't recall exactly what it said. So I know it's not perfect, and that's okay, because you know my little rule here. Any mistakes can be turned into alt. Doesn't have to be perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this aside. Even though I want to put a flower here for the butterfly, we're going to go ahead and wait. Oh, maybe two butterflies. 
we're going to set it out of our way because we're going to try something else with it. Let me set this over here. We're going to take our canvas. I want to show you guys how it can work on a canvas. Once again, this is a 16 by 12, and it's a material like it's like it is a canvas, but it's um, not on a piece of wood or anything like that. So no good base. It just comes in like a little photo. Uh, oh, hey, look, little hairs on it. You know what? Let's leave those hairs on it. Let's turn it into part of our design. Okay, so now instead of using the stencil, we're going to go ahead and we're not going to pre-paint this either. Although you really can. We're just going to see what we can do with this. Matter of fact, let's try the spoon. And since we're just learning how to use this, you guys, <laughs> excuse me, it doesn't have to be, you know, like the most beautiful rose you've ever seen in your life or a beautiful bird or sunset. You just simply put it on there. And press it in now. Let's see what it does. And just decide how we want to do it. And then you can actually just turn this into something. Once it's on here. If you can kind of see where you're going with it, I think, in my opinion. Let me pick up some more. So we're just going to put a couple of things on here just so we can see the difference. How it actually works between the two and the more I do this the more I see something coming out of it so we're just gonna kind of go with it and I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave the bulk on it normally I would just pick it all up but I kind of like that for whatever reason I don't know <laughs> and we're just gonna add this right through here so kind of like frosting a cake I guess the little wee ones can do this with you and have fun. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because eventually you're going to turn it into something. And we're just learning, so let's see what we can learn out of it, right? Let's just go ahead and see if we can get this. We're seeing about the pressure, how much it takes to push it in. Remember, this one is a little wetter than the other one, so let's just do this. And I'm doing absolutely nothing specific to it. I'm just getting different textures is actually what I'm out those so just this so we can experiment and see what we like. And once this is done, ooh, I just got it in my brain. Once this is done, you can totally turn this into another painting. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, because it just popped in my head, we're just gonna cover this canvas as if this is all paint and pretend that maybe this is a piece of wood or something on a tree we'll just go ahead and do that no fancy design i'm just after that 3d textures and then we will paint on over that and see what we get let's just have some fun with this make a surrealism i believe it's called painting Hi, Bugger Girl. Welcome. So we'll just get this on our little canvas and here. It can cut you like a what? Cut you just the tip. Oh my goodness. That I had no clue. Thank you. I had no clue. So we'll try to get all those real, real edges down. I just thought it'd be interesting to see what happens. Because there's a couple of things I want to make using this stuff on a different life. So in order to do that, I figured I had to learn what it was like. So it's very nice to know that it can cut you. I don't want no one getting cut. I'll go ahead and turn it this way. Pick up some of this excess. And just bring it on down. Oh, go this way. Okay. And you know what? I'm actually going to stop. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Something's telling me I have to stop right there, so that just means something's coming out of this. Put a lid on this stuff so it doesn't get all over the place, which is kind of too late because it already is. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this buddy aside, and we're going to grab this one that I pre-did, 
Oops, if I can get it off the table here, I'm sorry. Why the other one dries, and we'll get rid of this. Ooh, not that way I can't get rid of it. Okay, that way. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going through because I didn't know it can cut you. So I'm just going through to try to break off any of the top pieces. I'd rather me get cut than someone that might come over to touch it or something like that and get cut. So that's very nice to know. Okay. Okay, so we got this. I'm going to bring you guys back up for a second. <clears throat> because I want to show you my little finds. Why that sits there for a few seconds more, because it looks like it's almost dried, actually. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Welcome. I'm going to raise you back up. I want to show you guys what I found at a thrift store. Okay, I love thrift stores. I really love thrift stores. And I didn't find too much, because the lady apparently that does the donations of the crafts had been gone for a while. She had to take some time. So I found a few things that I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to pass them up. I kind of know where some of this stuff came from, which is kind of odd. Okay, let me grab these two things, and we are good as gold. Okay. No clue. Okay. One thing that I got, a pair of scissors. These are the old heavy duty, well I call them old, but they got the little, I don't know what you call it, the carving on the inside and they actually work still, they're not dull. So, and it's the heavy duty ones, so I really like those. Those were only two bucks, so I'm just those right here. Um, I also got these little flowers, brand new, still an original package for 50 cents. Go ahead and toss that aside. And I got these. These are not brand new. It looks like somebody had a big case and just stuck some on the inside of this. But hey, it's Easter, so you got little rabbits and got the colorations and the fuzzy ones in here. So I thought that would work. They were only 75 cents. Now I did get these, huh, baby? Okay, so if I don't get them first, you will hear from them a bit better. Oh, how sweet. Um, I also got these. Oh, put them in, I'm sorry. I also got these ones, and they were 75 cents. And these are all brand new, unopened, still in the original packaging. And then we got uh, three more things here. Got some more little pom poms, 75 cents. Um, still in original packing. So, package may look a little grunty, but stuff inside is still good. And then we got some glitter, which I'm totally out of glitter. 75 cents. This one here actually has never been opened. It's still sealed. You know how, oh, no, maybe it has. I, okay, it has. I didn't see that though. But it's full. So, however you look at it, it's full. I can close that. Oops. I see. Okay, come on, close. So, it's still good. Then, came across this beauty. Paid a dollar fifty, and this is glitter, and it's the crystal glitter. You can tell it's been sitting in the sun for a while, discoloration, but the glitter is perfect shape. So for a buck fifty, can't beat it. Anybody that buys glitter, you know how expensive they can get. Set that down. Okay, so let's check all things here, so we can just go on. Ooh. A butterfly, let me set this aside, sorry that went across you. A butterfly seems to be ready, so let's work on that. I'm going to load you guys right back down. Sorry if I went too fast. Okay, I hope you guys can see. Let me grab my paint. I am going to get that heat off of me. I'm going to die of a heat stroke here. Uh, Robin says the scissors are pinky shoes. Pinky shoes? Pinky. Well, how cool. Yeah, I learned something new. I didn't uh, know that. I just Bobby liked it. Thank you, Bucky girl. Robin says, "Hello, I go to thrift stores. Bucky girl says, "Not to go. Love glitter covered me in glitter." <laughs> Bye, Bucky girl. Uh, I love her. 
Okay, guys, so let's get started here. Um, oops, there's a drop of paint everywhere. So this actually is pretty dry. I'm checking for the sharp pieces again because I did not know that. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and take my knife because I see a little part where it kind of spread through. I know you probably can't see this. I'm trying to control the knife without cutting the wood. I just want to pick up that piece before it's way too dry. It's just almost too late. I didn't notice that. If I would have fastened down my thing, it would not have done this, but I did not. I should have put a little tiny piece of tape on it just to hold it centered. Okay. I want a little opening right here. Okay. So, let's pretend I did it right. And look, guys. Well, you you can see me rubbing it. I mean, I, I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? So, we can either start painting or we go ahead and finish the second half. And since we didn't paint the background, let's go ahead. Ooh. Let's do it both ways. That way we can see how it works. This is without painting the wood first, and then we'll do the flower with painting the wood first. So we can see how that works. So what we're going to do is I want it to kind of bright and cheery. So I'm going to, once again, I'm using this plain old acrylic paint. You can get that Walmart for like 50 cents, I believe it is. You know, plus your tax, of course. But it's a pretty good deal. Let me grab my paint brushes here. Mm, let me see, I'm doing the backing. So let me find my nice paint brush here. I think all my paint brushes are still in the kitchen. No, that wasn't small at all. Red, please go get my brushes. There's got to be a thing in there, honey, that has paint brushes in them. We'll use this one for now. Guys, when I look at paint brushes, what I'm looking for, I want it smooth. So if I get one of my brushes and it has, like this is a less expensive brush. So they kind of will leave this uneasy scraping across it. Well, if you had a more, and unfortunately it does have to do with the quality, um, it'd be more smooth. And it's easy on, and it feels good on your skin. So it'd be easy to work with. Thank you, love. Uh, I did leave them all in there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and trade that one back off for one of my other ones anyways. One I've been using on this stuff, just in case it will ruin my brush. Oh, it definitely did not. So let me show you this brush. Nice and soft. That's just, like, really, really nice. Soft. Okay, so our background, I wanted something really simple. And once again, I'm not trying to get this smooth. If there's little bumps in it, good. Because we want this to be where you can feel the difference in it. So I'm going to leave my box of uh, paint. I'm not going to smooth it in. I'm not going to take off any of these little unsightly little bumps. We're going to make it stay like that. And if it starts to fade away, we'll go back and add to it. Now, I'm not going to worry about getting some on a butterfly because we're going to go ahead and paint it anyways. But we wanted to test it out to see how it worked. We're just painting that after it was on there first. So let's just check that out. No, yeah, not bad. Kind of, kind of a different feeling, definitely. Interesting. Okay, it kind of feels like I'm going. <laughs> feels like I'm painting, and then suddenly I have a brick in front of me, and I can't paint no more. That's because of the uh, sparkle or the paste that's there. Sorry, I can't say the name correctly, so I'll just call it Pace. And so we'll go ahead and we're just go, oops, waste paint. We'll go ahead and finish this up. We'll just get this backing on here. And then we'll try the other one the other way once it's dry so we can see the difference in that as well. Once again, I'm picking up no bumps. I don't want I want the bumps there because I do want that texture. So it's not smooth, 
in case you're wondering what I mean by the bumps. Any little flaws that this has, I want them. Even the big ones, I'll take them. If it'll give it that, hopefully, it'll work well. It'll just kind of give it, one, it gives it a little more design to it. So it's okay to not have it so smooth, but perfect paint. It's okay to have the bumps. Especially when you're trying to do something that is more of a contact. So when you someone touches it, they feel it. And that's what we're after, most definitely after that. And I actually, um, like I said, first time using this stuff, really, I started practicing yesterday on those other two I showed you. But as far as the leaving bumps and stuff in your paintings, I started that a few years ago, and I found a part of it totally by accident. Um, when I did it, I had a painting underneath it. I was out of easels. I had nothing I can paint on. At that time, never thought about painting on wood. You know, painting signs and stuff like that did not sort of exist, but not where I come from. <laughs> well, you just didn't have that kind of luxury, right? So there we go so what we did is i would take a painting already done especially if i really really wanted to paint i take a painting that i've already painted and go ahead and uh basically cover it over with another paint and start another painting on top of it well this one i actually did that but at the same time i took paper mache because i build off of the it so it was flat and i build it up and i just cut little here a little there so when you touched it you had all this different textures all over it. nothing was the same no spot in this canvas is the same and i really enjoyed doing that so now we're gonna go ahead and turn the heater back on so it can kill me <laughs> and we're gonna set this in front of the heater because i don't know if you guys can see the lumps in it but we want to make sure and i can see it one part I missed. I'm just going to pick that up real super fast right there. And we're going to go ahead and set it aside. Let me get a cleaner brush. That one was wet and it just put water. I don't want the water. I want some of that paint in that little crack. Okay. We are good to go. I'm going to set this back in front of the heater. Bear with me while I push that heater away from me. Because, I'm sorry, it is hot. Okay. Now we can go ahead and bring back over. The one that, oops, I pre-did. And with this, you guys, once again, we're after the texture. And this one was done with just taking it directly out of the container without adding water. So I noticed some parts. It kind of comes up a little from the, uh, the canvas paper here. Let me grab this one. Let's test out the one that we just did. As far as it lifting up, it's still wet and it'll stay much better. You guys, I recommend putting a little, little, little bit of water, especially if it's coming from the Dollar Tree, and then just mix it up. But because that one still has to dry, we are going to work on this one. And as I picked it up, this very corner, I saw something. So we're going to start here. And we're actually going to pull up some interesting colors. Bob? Hi, Bob. Welcome. Jones says, Reg, you're so sweet to your mama. That says a lot about your darling. Keep being good girl. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That is very nice. Says, where did you get the paint? Get what? The paste. The paint? Paste. Oh, the paste. Let me show you for those that came on later. This is the paste. You guys, you can find this at the Dollar Tree. It's only, let me see. It's only six ounces, so if you've got a big one project you're doing, you might want to get a few of these or buy, you know, at a hardware or something. But for dollar eight for the smaller projects, and it goes a long ways, I did one, two, three things with one of these last night, okay, uh, for my samples. I did three things with one. So um, it's a dollar eight. It's just six ounces, dollar tree in an automotive part. So they're pretty cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me get my brush cleaned here. 
Dummy me left them all in the water last night, which is really something you should never do. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. I'm sorry, I'm having a hallucination. It's all right. Go ahead. Heidi. 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 Uh huh. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, Heidi. I think it's Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. Oh, I hope we got it right. It is a cool name. Okay, what I saw right here in this corner, and I don't know if you guys can see the corner actually. I got all my paints in a way. Let me move my brush stand. Okay. Um, what I'm doing is when I, I saw this, I immediately saw a flower here. So what we're going to do, and remember, this is the one without the water added to it, and this is a, a dying brush, so this is good. I saw this brilliant orange flower in here. So all we're going to do is we're going to pick up our paint. If some of this stuff breaks off, do not worry about it. Just move it out of your way. Just don't let your little wee ones eat it. So we're just going to go ahead and pull it up. And I'm coming from the bottom up because it's kind of like how my petals will go. And where I'm going to end the flower, I'm going to loop it because that will be the last part of that petal. For this flower and I'm gonna loop it here too. When I say loop it, I mean I'm making it will it will look like hopefully oops go up not down. Oh, she says it's pronounced Heidi. Heidi. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull up. Now remember this is not supposed to be a perfect painting, you guys. This is experimental. But believe it or not, some experimentals turn out to be your best work. Just go ahead and tap it in there. On something like this, you guys, I recommend using maybe a cheaper brush. Um, not as far as the quality as the bristles, unless you want, but as far as the quality of how much you actually spend on the brushes. Because if that stuff gets on your brushes, it could be a little harder to get it off or maybe even ruin your brush. Just so you know. Okay, I like to see this orange, brilliant, brilliant orange flower here. And we're not even going to do anything to it. And I'm not even going to worry about getting the, um, the bottom here. I'm going to leave it like that for a second, clean off my brush here. Because the next thing I see is I see some other interesting designs coming in here. But, whoops, sorry. But as far as the orange goes, excuse me, I also see this at the other end. I'm going to flip it so I can paint this. So bear with me here. And the reason why is I kind of think the two can be flowers that kind of counteract each other. Remember, it's a surrealism painting, so we don't need perfection on it. Um, as far as great details, you know, you can look at it and say, oh, what a beautiful sunflower. Um, on a surrealism, you don't have to have that. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. Okay, so we're just going to bring it from the bottom up. This time I am pulling it out onto where the plain canvas is. Just because I just, that's the way I see this flower. I'm calling it a flower just because of the way the texture is going and the way that they blocked off. When I mean block off, I mean like there's a little loop there. These are like little loops I'm calling them. And I'm just going to bring this in, turn this into like a little ideal that there could be a flower here. And look, this one actually has this right up in here, which means it could have been the other side. And this is just one side of the flower, and this is the other side popping through. And we're just going to pull up. Not making nothing fancy, just going to pull from the bottom up. And loop it around. Just pick up any pulse that you want to be this color. And here I got some little odd ends here and nothing here. I'm just going to, since it's not supposed to be the ideal perfect flower, we're just going to make you only see a couple of the little petals there. And I'm just going to pull down just to give it the idea that there was something else there that is now longer, no longer existence. Here, I can see where there's some of this coming here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just, I'm just going to pull that right into my flower. Go 
for lack of a better thing to call it, I'm calling them flowers, just because that's what it looks like. Okay. Now, because, 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 oh. I'm so thinking. Heidi says, oh, it's okay, LOL, hello. And Carolyn says, hi, from Virginia, and Becky says, hi, Sean. Hi, Becky. Hi, Kellen. Welcome. And now I am going to go ahead and bring out a little, little bit of green. I don't want a lot of green yet. Not that I won't in the future, but just right now I don't. I'm going to add a little bit of green. Um, not a lot. I just want to give the idea that there is something down here. And what I'm going to do, pull this up higher so you guys can see the bottom. Because something has to be here, it doesn't have to be, there is something here. I'm going to pretend that there's something coming right through here. Hi, Tiana. Hi, Tiana. Welcome. Gianna. Gianna. And we're just going to blend it right in here. And it is coming out to kind of look like there's something here that would grass onto these as flowers. And we're going to go ahead and pick this up, bring in some extra little paint here. Mimble is doesn't have to actually look like a flower because it's not yeah, that type of painting. Oh, good afternoon. Okay, I think that's good enough right there. We're going to flip it for that other orange one there. Because I saw it previously, I saw that little design on this one before any of them. So I'm going to go ahead, even though I don't have a lot of that stuff down here, I'm going to make... Like a little, little, not smooth. I want it to look like this bulge there. And we're just going to pretend that there's something right in here. We're just going to pretend that there's part of a stem. And call it good. It doesn't have to be perfect. And call it good. Okay, we'll clean that brush. Close my paint here, guys. Now, our next step is we're going to set this aside and let it dry because I think we can work on a butterfly. We'll let this dry for a few minutes, although we could continue with that. But our butterfly is right here, and even though it's a little wet because of what well, I didn't make it smooth, I wanted that bold. I want those little things in there once again, baby. Red, will you please pick that up, honey? I dropped it. Thank you, love. Okay, I want to put a flower. I always use this flower. Let's see how. Mm, I think we're going to put a butterfly in there. We're not even going to put a flower. Let's use this butterfly that we have obviously never used. So, in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and get our chalk stuff back which I did not cover this one for some reason. Let me get that covered. Or oh, paste, I'm sorry. Let me get the paste back here. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. And Welcome. Says here, but have to go here. Oh, thank you, Tammy. Say hi. Love you guys. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to pick up some of more of the paste here, if you will. I'm going to hold it down because I don't have it taped. So we're going to take that same chance, chance that we did last time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> place it where we think your two butterflies should go. I'm going to place it right here. Oops, I got it backwards. Well, I'm pretending I'm left-handed. So one thing I'm definitely not is left-handed. Yeah, I can't even pretend I'm left-handed. Sorry, guys. All you lefty out there, you're lucky. And we're just going to go ahead with the uh, paste, go down once again. Now, remember, this is on top of what's been painted, well, that one wasn't painted. Barbara says, hey, from Watertown Maps. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're just going to go ahead and paste it, or paste it. Put this down. Smooth it out if you want. I'll use my hands. It ain't going to kill me. And get that going. This is the one we added water to. to make it a little easier to smooth it out. Says, I'm Yay, I'm you got a lefty. Huh? I'm 
I was left-handed. Yeah, Red was left-handed until she got was in an accident and burned her hand really bad. Burned nose. Yeah, there, I, we knew, know someone that, you know, we know him for a while, and he made a comment about left-handed people. Not a bad one. He said, you're almost perfect to red. And we're like, okay, that's really interesting. Thank you. Why would anybody say someone's almost perfect? But that's because I guess nobody should be perfect. At least not my opinion. We all have to grow and be individuals. Well, found out that he goes, you would be perfect if you were left-handed. And we both laughed and like, what? And we go, well, technically, she is left-handed. And he goes, oh, you're perfect. <laughs> and we just laughed at him. He was funny. Okay, we lift it off. And let me set that one right there. Now we got our other butterfly on here. It looks pretty good. Any place that you think you might have some of that you don't want to smooth it out real fast, take it off. So it looks pretty good. Remember, this one's on, and this one was just on the wood. We're all going to go ahead and set it aside and go back to our uh, big flower here, or our cerulean and painting, and see what happens with that one. Let me pick this up. Don't want the babies, the four babies eating that stuff. Or the real babies. I definitely got to sweep. <laughs> okay, let me bring back our little painting here. While that dries, and hopefully it dries fast before it kills me. It's funny. I know a lot of you guys are in a lot of snow right now, but we're sunny California. So we don't have that luxury of snow. Said, what pace is that? Um, the pace is actually spackle. I call it pace because I can't say that word 99% of the time. <laughs> I know it's pretty bad. But it's just from the Dollar Tree, Baba. Um, just a six ounce container. And save these container guys because you'd be surprised what you can make out of these babies. I almost threw it away and I thought, no, that's like a clay container. Why would I throw that away? Um, well, that's coming out so quickly. Oh, thank you, Brooklyn. Um, Robin says, still cooking, but I'll have to chime in. I am all left-handed. Oh, yay. Hey, left-handed people. And Barbara says, thanks. No problem. Welcome. Left-handed, right-handed. How many hands? Just curious. Okay, so we're going to open up the yellow. Just because I want to really see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? So bright, cheerful. All right, let's set that aside and open up my white. Remember, these are just plain acrylic paints and they're from Walmart. I should get an affiliated mink, huh? Much as I sell Walmart's paints, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm just telling you guys what I use. Okay, we're gonna open purple. Now remember, this doesn't have to be where you can tell what everything is because of what it is. These are old paints. i got to purchase some more. See, we'll still brush it. And I'm now wearing my paint. That's okay. Not the first one to glass. All right. So I got, once again, I got a soft brush. And what I thought I would do is you got to look at it. I know it doesn't have to really be anything because we're testing it but I actually think I'm going to take the purple and I'm going to follow through just some designs here and there just because it just stood out and if there's a cut off that's fine there could be a cut off we're just going to make it kind of fun I'm hoping so if the little wee ones are working with their grandparents or the mom and dad or the sisters you know then just have fun. So that's all we're going to do. Just have fun with it and put some designs in here. See how this does with the spackle. Hey, I said it. <laughs> Nothing fancy at all. I'm going to go ahead and bring some of this right over here. I just saw that big opening there. And I'll go ahead and just 
wipe it on up. It feels pretty cool, guys, painting on this. You have all these different levels, and it's just, it's kind of like really smooth for the most part. It's just really cool. I don't know how to explain it. I think I would actually love to do a huge painting with this. Wouldn't that be awesome? Okay. Oop, this one just popped out at me. I'm just seeing these little designs in here, just a little coloration, just to add something. It doesn't have to connect to a complementary color or anything. It's simply because it's there. I'm just taking my purple. See, I went over that little border. It didn't have to have a border there. But it will feel, you'll still feel that same border when you touch it. Because once it dries, the whole point of this is to be able to take your hands and rub your hands over it and feel the difference in them in this texture. And then the post that didn't have this stuff, you definitely should be able to feel the difference with that compared to what does. We'll just kind of blend that in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish this circle with it. And then we're going to skip to the next area that I just saw. Right here. Do a little loop. This is strictly for fun. And to bring it into this kind of paint. i got to lift it up so I don't hit my computer. There you go. And I think, ooh, how about here, guys? We'll just add a little bit of this right here. And see what happens. All right. So we got some purple coloration in there. Let me clean the brush off. We take a different brush, actually. Let me go ahead and go back to this one here. And we're going to pull out the yellow. And show you guys this. Oops, sorry. That's a way to get it on top. That's all right this time. That's such a pretty color. I love that yellow. So with the yellow, the first thing I saw, believe it or not, was this strip right here. So we're just going to go ahead and see what it takes us. Gonna add some thick coloration. Hello, Miss Melon. How are you, love? I'm just gonna bring that right through here. Oh, the head trick. Oh well. And go ahead and bring it through here. And I think I like the other kind of brushes to do this with better. Because this one's very fine and smooth. Yeah, I'm gonna switch it out. We'll take this one. I try to get the little brushes up here doing this because you've got more control over them. So we'll go ahead and use the one we use with the purple. And we'll have the control. There we go. Perfect. And you can just tap it, pick up the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. Just you just want to be able to feel that difference in there. So you can feel this texture and how it works. Let me bring this over here. I think that's good. What do you think? Move on to another section. First one popped out of me was this little tiny one right here. So I'm go ahead and paint that yellow. The way I see it is something pops out at you, or something color just catches your eyes in a certain design, that's meant to be there. So that's where you just bring it on down. And we'll just add here. How's our butterflies doing? Okay, butterflies is drying nicely. Killing me in the process. <laughs> I know you guys are probably thinking, quit complaining. It's so cold here. I'll give you guys credit. I could not do the snow. I just can't. We'll go ahead and add this one here. It kind of reminds me of a petal. So we're going to make it that petal. And just bring it through. All right, put that aside. Get that little bit up right there. All right, how's all? Almost, butterfly is almost ready for us to self design. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush back here with it. Just mix it up these other ones. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same brush. 
And I think, well, actually, the first color that popped in my eye was pink. So let's use some of this pink. Maybe we'll get some other colors out here, too. Ooh, that's a nice one. Okay. Let's set that aside. Where should it go? Oops. Right there. The first place that spots out at you guys is where it goes. Remember, this is not, not a Pacific design. It is surrealism, I believe. Right, Jolene? Is that how you say it, Red? Surrealism? Okay. She's like, I'm a musician, Mom. Okay. We'll just, ooh, right here. We just put it wherever it pops out at you. I'm just kind of jamming little edges underneath there. So remember, you're going to have some of those imperfect places because of the, the pace. And that's what we want it to begin with, so we might as well just go for it, right? Go ahead and bring it down. We'll bring it right over here. Right in there, and then we'll pull up. And obviously, that must be good because it's telling me to stop. This one popped out at me. So with this, you guys, you just simply have fun. Just put your pattern in there. It's all supposed to be totally random, mm -hmm. at least on this one. So if you want yours different, then that's the way you go with it. Just totally follow what you like doing or what you see in your own design. Okay. We're so done that two colors, but that's all right. Okay. Now we'll go ahead. Our butterflies ready. We'll let this thing dry, and then I think we ought to get away from these lighter colors, add some blues, and maybe some darker colors in this. Let's set that aside since that's strictly to experiment and see how that worked out. Oh, nice. Okay. On a butterfly now. Oh, most definitely. I like that. I'm going to take off all the sharp edges before it really, really dries. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and paint all butterflies. And I think I actually am going to start with this little guy. And I think I'm just going to do a real simple, simple yellow coloration to him. Trying to find the brush I'm going to use. There we go. Okay, we're going to bring back my yellow. The colors got mixed in it from the other one, guys. Just mix it together real fast. And there we go. Most likely, the color that was in the linen is more dominant than what you put in there. So we'll hide it. So we can go ahead and we'll make this little guy yellow. Let's see how he stands out if he can. I do not like this brush. I got that wrong brush again. If you guys have a very steady hand, which I do not, you could always paint the outer edge down here that separates wood from the actual butterfly and paint that maybe a dark black or dark blue, something to show that it's 3D from the side instead of just having to touch it. And that'll give you a very, very cool design. We'll go ahead and get this here painted down. We're just going to do this whole thing yellow. Once it's dry, then we'll add designs to this. And I want the whole butterfly to be the yellow. And I should have changed my brush when I said I didn't like that brush. This is what I wanted. Okay. I went off the edge a little, but that's okay because we'll bring in the other colors and just hide it. Nobody knows the difference. Unless they watch this video, we'll be telling them, right? <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we can bring this. Oops. Don't do what I just did. If you rinse your brushes off, guys, make sure you take out the excess water. 
which obviously I did not just do. So I got a big mess here that we're going to have to fix. That's all right. We can fix it. And get the other little wing here going. All right, I'm just going to do it real fast. Don't have to be perfect. Just an example anyways of how it can look. I know it kind of sucks because it kind of looks the same way as the other ones. This is more the touchy type thing. you got to be able to touch it to really get the whole gist of it. And unfortunately, you guys can't touch it. Someday videos will get to where you actually probably could. The technology the way it is, it's 3,000 miles away and better touch what someone's making. That would be kind of cool, huh, guys? Okay. So now we got a, oh, we got a wings done. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save that little bit of y'all. And I got paint all over my face. We're going to pull out a different color. I should just get a whole different type of paint. And quit using these for a while. Oh, that's a darker blue. What do you think of that, guys? And I thought we'd bring in some... Oh, you know what? How about some gray, too? This is take them all out, almost. That's okay. So, our next step is we're going to work on this little guy here. Try to take off any of those excess pieces. Once this thoroughly dries... Do what? Oh, Sharpie. Very cool. Good idea. Good, good idea. And now we'll go ahead and we're going to finish up this little butterfly here. I'm actually going to bring some gray out in it. You know, if we use um, all the mixed medias, Brooklyn, couldn't we go over this with Mod Pods to help seal it? I, I think we can. That was my intention eventually of doing that. Is that a small one here? Oh, I don't really have a small, small brush. Oh, I got this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead, instead of making this brown or black like most butterflies, we're going to bring it gray. Who says they have to be the exact same? Let's just give them a little gray here. Not exactly the best, best brush for this, but it works. She said gray. Gray? Okay. That's what it should be. And go ahead and I'm gonna bring this right up here. When you're doing the little butterflies, all you do is really just follow the shape. Nothing fancy at all, you guys. It's real simple. Normally I don't put that much paint on my brushes. I'm getting careless today. Okay. So he's good enough. Ooh, you can also go through and add little stones on these. Funny how all these things pop in your head as you do stuff, right? We're also going to be making a reef, believe it or not. We're going to do a reef. But I'm going to show. Oh, no, I just spread y'all. I can hide that. Don't, I'm not going to panic. I can hide it. But what we're going to do with the reef is we're going to make it out of something from a Dollar Tree. And we're not going to buy a, a cross frame because we're going to make a cross. We're going to make a frame. I'm going to leave some of the white showing. I just think that's pretty cool looking. All right. So I do have that one little arrow I just made. Let's go ahead and see if we can cover it now. 
Okay, let me see. Get a paintbrush I did not just use with the dark color. I'll take this one. This is a good brush. But this here, you guys, if I would have seen it soon enough, I probably could have picked it all up, but I didn't see it soon enough. So no big deal. Clean on a brush. My water's kind of dirty. We got some of this water. I'm just dump it on it. Hang on. One second. Good enough. Go that way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick up my color, and I'm just going to paint right over that. Mistakes can be hidden, or they can be happy little accidents, and blend into your projects. There we go. Yep. I just dripped some over here, getting the brush. All right. So we can go ahead and let this little guy sit for a few minutes because we want to get to this butterfly and we want to finish him up. I'm not going to seal that because we're actually going to put a design right there so no reason to quit. got to quit dropping these. Try to seal it. But what we are going to do is go ahead while that does dry some, we will bring this little guy back. And we're just going to add some colors through this. No designs. Let's go ahead and use this. I really like this color. I'm so fond of this color. Let me use this brush. Okay. No, I'm not. I don't want that brush. Uh, what is the one I want? Oh, okay, right there. No! Sorry, folks. I don't. All right. So we're going to go ahead. And I'm just going to start adding colors in here. We're just going to try to just fill up our little thing here. This was just an experiment, so I really didn't want to put no design on it because I didn't think that it would actually work out, to be honest with you, because of the way the um, paste itself was in the container. But now that we tried it, I think it would be pretty good that you can actually paint projects with this. So we're just going to go ahead and finish this up. I like the ridges. Once again, you can fill them. Oops, I got a lot of paint on that one. I'm not going to pick it up and make it part of the design. There we go. Let me just kind of get this going here. <coughs> I'm down to a little flower here. Bring some of this up. It seems to be sticking pretty well onto the canvas itself. So that's pretty cool. At least we know it won't be a total waste of money. Something that we'd be able to use again and again, perhaps, in different projects. I think that'd be pretty cool. There we go. I think we will bring it out this way. And we're going to connect them. I'm just very fond of this color. I love this color. Okay, I won't connect it there because of that, but I will fix this little spot there. Come up and catch that little edge. So, I'm going to turn it around. So my arm doesn't have to stretch so far because my arm is starting to hurt. And we'll go ahead. I'm just going to use this color as most of the blending of this. I'm so can't wait. To be able to just take my hand and rub across it and see if it worked. Add some of this in here. The colors are just to give it something that will pop. Oh, cool. Thank you, Brooke. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I don't do many reefs, so when I do, I'm like excited about them.
Okay. So I think these colors look pretty, pretty good. We're going to go ahead. I think it's just this one strip that keeps popping at me right here. Add just a little strip of this color right through there. Call that good. All right. Let's see. Oh, that's cool, guys. I like that. That's going to be really, really cool. So next time when we do something with this kind of stuff, we can actually paint a design, like maybe a house or a river or flowers, mountain sceneries, something like that. I'm just going to lay this here so we can see. Oh, this is the one we did with a little bit of water. You guys, I think, I really think a little bit of water is much nicer. It makes it smoother. You can see where the big pieces are coming off because it's not quite dry. Okay. Now the question is, once it dries, will it actually stick to the canvas? That's nice. I can do this all day. It just feels really good. Alright, let's get it out of our way here. Get back to what we're finishing up. Boy, I'm kind of out of pretty colors, huh? I know what we're going to do. We have this one. Uh, we have a pink brush. I did, oh, my black one. I like this brush. Here we go. What I'm going to do, because I'm kind of bored with the colors we got, because I'm always using those colors because it's what I got. I'm going to make our own colors. I'm going to add a little bit of this purple. It came out a little faster because it was warmer. We're going to add the white. I hope you guys can see. Add some white down here. And we're going to, once again, Take the middle, go through the middle, and we're going to pull up. We're going to make our own little color here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but all I'm doing is making like a light, nice, pretty little violet. We're just going to add different colors in here just to give it something else. Pull that one back up. A little violet. That one back up. Put some of that here. Hello, Miss Mellon. Oh, is that you? Yes, hello. I have a kitty cat trying to sneak up behind me. Miss Mellon, if you jump on me, baby, my arm won't let me catch you, so please don't try. Thank you, love. So we're just going to add some of this violet throughout it, just to give it a different colorations to it. Add some here, some there. This was just to see, guys. It wasn't supposed to be a perfect anything. This is simply to see how that stuff works. Because I hear people talking about it, but it's that I wanted to see the quality. But the people I've seen done it. Back in search, John, you did such interesting things, a great, interesting thing. Thank you for sharing your comments. Oh, thank you, Becky. You're so sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this right here. And I don't care if it's covered in a perfect. Because it blends that other color in. Because right now we're just trying to bring different colorations in there. Let's bring that in there. That's kind of cool. Now I'm going to pick up the dark color, the dark purple. I kind of think it has to go right through here. Notice the white coming out in it? That's okay. That's the other brush, the color I had on my brush, so it's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it. Pick up some of the darker part of it, make it come a little darker through here. We'll go this way with it. And I'm going to slow down. Oh, good. It was a different color. Okay. I think I'll probably go back and just change that one little piece right there. I like the purple, so I just thought we'd cover the rest with the white part here with the purple. Since I got so much out on accident, I'm going to use it up. 
Alrighty. We'll come over here, and I don't really want these two touching the same color. But what I'm going to do is pick up a lot of my white. I'm going to make a very bright violet. Since I have it there on the table anyways. We're just going to add a strip here as if it was always meant to go right there. And it's okay to do stuff like that, you guys. Nothing has to be how everybody thinks things has to be perfect. It doesn't. We'll bring this one over here, and we'll just pick this color right through this stuff here. And I think it should go nice. Big spot right there. Right through here. So once this whoops, dries, we just rub our hands across it, test it out, see if it falls apart. Pick up a little more of this color, and I think I would actually like to bring it right through here. And we'll just whoop up. Just go up because the way it's shaped, we just pull it right up and over on that. It's like a little mountain there. Hey, that's kind of cool. Hey, we can use this to make mountains. Yes. That'll be awesome. All right. So we're going to bring in some grays because I have it here open already. We'll go ahead oops, and bring in some grays. Kind of finish up what we started on this one, and then we'll finish on butterfly here real fast. At least we'll get the gist of it. Because I want this to dry before you guys go, because I want to be able to tell you if I think it's worth. I mean, it's just my opinion. But I don't like to have people waste money on something that I'm doing if I don't think it's worth wasting the money on. So we'll go ahead with the gray. There's going to be probably a little more of the gray than anything else. The gray is like a finishing touch. It's just a kind of like a fill in. You can do that with green, yellow, pink, purple, black even. You can go through here with black highlights and just turn it into something. I'm just going to go ahead and use the gray. I just think it kind of stands out. Let me go ahead and pull that up here. Okay, we'll come over here. Pick it up here. And just kind of push it right to that end, pull it through here. Kind of connecting all the left rooms here is what we're doing. Okay, if that blends, we'll just blend it right in there. This probably would look really cool black. Maybe I'll go through later and outline a few things with some black, just enough to bring in some different designs to it. Let's just pull this out. And we don't even have to finish that whole part there. We'll bring some gray over here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to bring the ideal that it should be gray, but we're not going to finish it. We're going to leave it. And then we're going to turn our little design around. Bear with me while I turn it around. My arm is starting to give out. So we're just going to kind of do it real fast here. Kind of push it in there just a little. And pull that right on out. And we'll just pull this down. And I'm not trying to do it perfect. I just want to get the idea that there's colors here. At least something here, right? You can go through, you can add some white, or you can leave a few places white to give that concept that there was white there at one time, or is white. Go right through here. I'm going to bring that yellow in here. Go in real fast. It feels like little mountains, you guys. 
feels like I'm painting in 3D mountains right there. So cool. So I really, really hope this will work once it's dried. And we'll go over it with Mod Podge. Because it's like a, well, it's a glue, I guess. But it'll make it much shinier than what it is. So it will really stand out. Oh, we got a little tiny piece here. I'm just going to add a little bit of gray there. Just so it looks like it's supposed to have gray. Because we're using the gray as our final color. To kind of blend it all together. Instead of adding black. Because black draws your eyes right to the black. And I kind of just want your eyes to be all over the place on this one. I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to pull some of this through here. Oop, look what happened. It got in my paint that was on the table. And it kind of did that. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that big old hunk of paint right there. We're not going to mess with it. Because I think it's kind of cool looking. So we're just going to leave it like that. Come on down here. Let's fill this in. And we'll just go ahead and finish that up right through here. And this is, whoop, getting on my computer. That's all right. There we go. Just kind of connect it. So I think, with the exception of two spots, and some little odd and ends, like around here, and these two spots here, I think we're actually going to go ahead and add some color in these two spots. I can totally mess it up by adding color I want to, just because I can. Hi Mel, says, Hello, everyone. welcome. I'm glad you made it. We are painting with buckle paint, spackle paint. I'm actually going to do what I told myself not to do, just because I really like the color, so I'm going to do it anyways. And since it's experimental, why not? I just want to add some little extra orange through here. Like maybe there's a little flower or something hiding in here and you just seen the little tips. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll set this little buddy aside. We'll move and cover that piece of orange. Once this dries, see if it's um, going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. We got our little outrageous design there. We're going to pick up a butterfly. Move these paints out of my way. And I know there's paint there, so I'm going to lay that very cautiously right on top of it. I'd rather waste the paint than have it all over my floors. Yeah, it's cleanable. <laughs> so, anyways, what we're going to do is go ahead and pick up our black paint brush just because I like this paint brush. Probably too big, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And get it clean off just a little. Okay. Now we got our butterflies going. Where's my tiny, tiny brush? Let's pull up a very tiny brush right here. I wonder why I didn't see it. It's stuck. Okay. I'm gonna bring this little guy into some play here. And now we're gonna go ahead and pick up our colors. Since this messed up, what we're gonna do, oops. Pull that over here instead of stretching. We're going to bring some purple in here. Once again, I am going to try to get it off the top of my edge. And I'm just going to add this here. A little purple design. The brush I'm using is kind of the wrong brush. But that's how I, I do like this brush. So we're just going to make it work. Eventually, I will go around and I will outline them. Probably with some other color. I'm not quite sure which. I think this one needs a little circle here, maybe one here, and we're just going to kind of put some through here. Not perfect, but that's all right. Right through here. So we're going to end up with like five on this one, four on the other one. That's okay. I think that's enough for the purple for that butterfly. We're going to go ahead and be bold. I'm going to bring the orange back. Right in the middle of the top two wings. 
Let's give it something to really catch someone's eye here. We're just going to give it a nice orange shape right through here. And what we do there, we do here. This is the wrong paintbrush for it, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and just add a little extra height to that one. There we go. And since we did it there, let me dump some orange out because we're still going to be using the orange. What I did there, I'm just going to pick up the top. Normally I won't do dots, but in this case I'm going to. I'm just going to give it a dot of orange. Just enough on that bottom to make it like, oh, look, it blends. So, now our next step is we're going up to our other butterfly. This butterfly, oh, we're going to leave that out. Let me move that. Let's go ahead and let's check something out. Oh my gosh, I think it works, guys. So cool. It's, you can tell that there's a shape there. If I close my eyes, yep, I think we got it. Yep, I think we did it. All right. So let's go ahead. You know what? We're going to do something totally off the wall for here. We're going to make a white butterfly. You go ahead and pick up. Whoa, what happened to that? That's odd. Right. That's so weird. That's my bad. I had it by the heel. We can turn that thing off. Mom, so is this the same butterfly from the other day with the flower? It is. It is the same type of butterfly. Matter of fact, it's the exact same. Uh, we will try. Let me show you now. We will experimenting with this. And I thought I'd just use what I had here because it's what I had here. This is Spackle, Spackle, and it's at the Dollar Tree for a dollar plus tax, so a dollar eight. And what we're doing is we're seeing if we can how this would make a plain surface more of a 3D shape. So if someone touched it, they can feel that there's something there if they're blind or visually impaired or disabled and they can't, you know, they can feel something there. So I thought I'd go ahead and just use the exact same stencils and stuff I had instead of going digging out more and just see how it worked. So that's kind of like the, what we're doing here. And also, the other ones we did, whoops, I put my hand right in the center of all the paint. That was a brilliant. It's the same concept we did with these, with the butterfly is done on this, so that we can see and feel how it works. So I'm hoping it works. No, no, no guarantees. It's all experimental. And I'm stuck in the paint. <gasps> that wasn't good. I just made a huge mess, you guys. But that's all right. I had to get the heat off me. And I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. So let me just pick that up. And we'll just spread it right on a butterfly. We can always fix that part later. Not a big deal. All right. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to turn him white. If I would have left him white to begin with, I probably still would have ended up painting him because you can tell it's a much prettier, prettier white than what the pace is. And I'm not going to make him smooth. I'm not going to try to keep him smooth because we want that filling there. We'll just do this here real fast and see if it works. Like that. What you doing, love? Nothing. All right, I think that's pretty good. I kind of like how it looks actually. It's bulging. <gasps> Pretty cool. We're going to be doing a cross um, on next live, which will be made out of. 
look what I did. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to panic. Don't panic. We're going to go ahead and use that as part of our design. We will go over it. Like I'm going to do the edges here. I messed up over here. And we will make it blend in. And what's good about that big old hunk there is it'll be a bold. It'll be so when you touch it, you'll feel that difference. So I'm not going to panic. I don't even know where I picked it up from, but okay. Then come right over here. My arm is telling me that I need to stop. I have problems with my arm due to nerve damage. But it's really my fault this time. I ran out of my medicine. The only thing that makes it so I can actually use my arm. And I want it so bad to be able to get off of it. So I was trying and then I discovered that sometimes even if it's just an anti-inflammatory or an aspirin, sometimes you just have to have that little extra. And in my case, with the damage in my arm, just like with my back, you just kind of got to accept the fact that some things you just got to do to be comfortable. Alrighty. So they finally, I did get my medicine. This is really dumb. It's just IV oh no, excuse me, napacin. I mean, really, it's just an anti-inflammatory. You would think it wouldn't make a big difference. It's just like basically an aspirin, in my opinion. Of course, I'm not a doctor or someone that works with medicine, but I have learned it does help with because I do refuse pain medication. I'm not going to get hooked on pain med pills. So, what I'm doing, guys, you may think I'm wasting the paint, but once again, I just want that bold. So, this will take a, a while to dry because I really wanted it to be that extra, extra lumpy so people can actually feel it. And I'm going to raise you guys back up. Let me turn you this way just a little. And the reason why I am so very much wanting it so that you have that bold so that you do feel that texture is grandpa is legally blind so he can't it's like he can't just come up and look at something oh that's cool it does good eye so i think it's very crucial for people of all generations all cultures all physical limitations to be able to enjoy art. So I really wanted him to be able to enjoy it as well. So now, once again, this is the one that we did. We'll last go through. This is the one that we did with the water, which is so much smoother than the one we have done without the water that we just painted. And it's drying. And I just threw that on the floor. Don't tell nobody. And all butterflies are starting to look real, starting to look pretty good. Um, that's what I painted on pretty cool. So we will see how that works once it dries. And we go through and finish that up. But I'm going to have to quit you guys. I'm starting to really hurt. So tell me, I got to take it slow. So two, three days, right? Anyways, as always, um, could you guys please like and share if you like the video. Uh, thank you so very much for blessing us and coming and joining us. It means a lot to us. Oh, thank you, Mel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I love having you guys here. And thank you for everything. And as always, be blessed.